Jewish mysticism places a premium value and significance on the head. The head rests above the entire body. It's the home of our brain, our control center, sending directives and adjusting life force to every specific part of our being. Furthermore, it is the seat of our godly soul. With this in mind, we find something seemingly very puzzling in this week's Parsha. When Joseph and his only full brother Benjamin meet up after not seeing each other for 22 years, the Torah describes the emotional reunion. Genesis chapter 45 verse 14. And he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and he wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Why the neck? What happened to the head? The shoulders? The Talmud in Megillah page 16b explains the reason for Joseph's weeping was due to the fact that Benjamin was the tribal host of our two holy temples which would be destroyed. And similarly, the reason for Benjamin's weeping was due to the fact that Joseph was the tribal host of the tabernacle in Shiloh, which would be destroyed. The reason the Talmud is inclined to explain that the neck hints to the holy temples is for the verse states in Song of Songs chapter 4, Kemigdal David Savorech, your neck is like the Tower of David, which makes the question even stronger. Shouldn't the temple, the holiest of structures ever built, be compared to the head, the highest, most important, most sensitive part of our body? Why does the verse compare the temple to the neck? Why does Joseph and Benjamin weep specifically on the neck? The mystics therefore explain to us the significance of the neck. For all the head is worth, for its awesome, powerful, and necessary powers, its relationship with the rest of the body must flow through the neck. Absent the neck, the head cannot apply its will to anything. It's only through the channel of the neck that the head conveys its orders and can make a difference. God, like the head, gave us in this world a mandate to transform darkness into light, to be a light onto this world. But that's just a theory. It was the temple that, like the neck, served as the conduit for that perfect amount of life force to reach me and you. Now we can make a difference. Now we can fulfill our mission. My grandfather was an old school American young man. Just before he got engaged to my grandmother, he told her, I'm just letting you know, that in my home, I will be the head of this home. That's the way I was raised, and that's the type of family I'd like to have. My grandmother, without missing a beat, replied, Sure, you can be the head. I'm going to be like the neck, and it's only wherever the neck turns that the head will go. Many times in life, we strive to be the head. But truth be told, it may not be the most impactful. For a message needs a messenger to spread it. Our role is to be most impactful. And for that, the messages of the head must run through the neck. This may also provide us with a deeper meaning into the words, a stiff-necked people, as in a people who are not channeling the powerful, divine, godly light and energy to its proper places. Let's ask ourselves, how can I be more like a neck and facilitate the divine energy to run through me? How can I be more aware and helpful to others and allow for their insights and light to spread forth and have an impact? I wish you a good Shabbos.